Hey guys, what's my detective here coming at you with another ghost town exploring and hiking video. So right here, literally right along the trail, found these two old mule shoes. This one's still got one nail left in it. And here's a look at this broken one. They're literally right there, buried. But yeah, it's a pretty damn cool find. I'm sure we'll find a lot more stuff like that along the way. Where the trail go? Well, I guess it goes straight down. Oh, there it is. Ah, yeah, whatever. Oh, bro, did you see this old metal mesh? There's like an old metal mesh, like classifier right here. All right, guys, continuing along this old mule trail, found yet another one of these nice shoes. This one's actually got two nails still in it. And uh, there's actually, off to the left here, there's a mine site. So there's cable, there's actually an aerial tramway. And then one of the mines is right over there. You can't really see it in the video, but there's actually, looks like an ore bin, probably a chute and who knows what else is up there but yeah that tramway pretty much goes all the way down to the bottom of this canyon right here so here's a closer look at this uh, aerial tramway as you can see it's still got the cable going across so there's actually looks like two collapsed tram towers there's one lower and there's that one and then of course we got this intact tram tower right here on this little mesa but of course let's go check out this intact one maybe if we look upwards maybe we could see an ore bucket still hanging but yeah this is the uh this is the tramway that pretty much heads all the way up 
it's right about that point and that was the mine that I showed you guys earlier oh, so here's one of the rollers that's where the cable would have ran across still got the little pulley right here But yeah, it gets substantially steeper right there. But man, this thing dates back to right around the 1870s, 1880s. So this is really amazing to see. Still standing. As you can see, right down here they used pretty big rocks for the supports. But yeah. The ghost town site is pretty much right below us, right down here in the canyon. So it'll probably be maybe another 20, 30 minutes and then uh, we'll be down there. All right guys, so right below this second tram tower, we got this ore bucket hanger, and it's actually got a manufacturer's name right here. So that says Trenton Iron Company, and it's got a year of 1894. We actually got a patent date right here of May 18th, 1897. And it's still got both of those two pulley wheels. Johnny's investigating where the bucket went, but uh, yeah, the next one's down there. And I'm sure there's just way more stuff we'll come across very soon. All right, finally descending on the ghost town, we can already see one of the main camps right here got a couple bed frames oh never mind johnny i see the outhouse i'm stupid it's on this left side right there T I, figured it was close. I honestly i didn't even know i i just figured it was like way further but yeah this place has so much cool stuff to offer looks like there's three bed frames right there and probably the highlight of this whole trip, for me at least, is this beautifully intact five stamp mill, which we'll be checking out very shortly here. I like the missing out there. Yes. I mean, it's pretty cool. I wouldn't say it's a highlight for me though. But yeah, just look at that thing. It's gotta be at least. 20, 25 feet tall all the way to the top, top timbers. But yeah, there's just a bunch of really cool artifacts here all over that table. I just can't get over the fact that this uh, stamp mill is around 140 years old or even more. And it's still standing here. That is just Amazing. What do we got? Oh. Oh, that's a bunch of cool stuff. Wow. Got some stove parts. Pan. Old brick over here. Um, very old bottles. That one definitely looks like it's uh, blown in a mold. Probably from the 1880s or 1890s. Got a Horn, got a, a sheep horn, horns, a bunch of purple glass, spoon, file, amber bottle, a couple of 
Looks like mule shoes. So much cool stuff. And here's the camp. Got that bed frame right there. Got that bed frame right there. And we got one right here. And another one. Uh, I'll go check out this stamp mill right now, but I gotta stop filming so that I could get down there. All right, so here is a closer look at this five stamp mill. Like I said, this thing probably dates back to around 1880s. And it's still got all five of the stamps. Not sure if it's got the dies down there or not. But it's even still got the cams. Those would have rotated around. Still got the massive bowl wheel. That thing's got to be at least like six feet in diameter. And then you got the smaller one on this side. Kind of slanting to the left. And then you got that smokestack coming off of that boiler right there. So I'll go around and check that out. It looks like there's like a riveted air tank or something right down there. Oh man, what a sight to see. Especially after such a long hike. 100% worth it. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get through here because look at all this brush. I brought a machete along but uh, I don't know how useful that would be while I'm filming. Alright, well I'm going to go check out that boiler. Just got to go around. Up down here. Oh yeah, and then I'll get a closer shot of the bottom right here. Pretty cool shot, the bottom side of this stamp mill, man. <laughs> what an amazing sight. This is definitely one of the main reasons coming out here, just seeing all this old stuff. Ah, uh, it's still got all five. So cool. And then right here in the brush, I believe, oh my god, this is a steam engine. Got this big old flywheel on the left. But yeah, that's what that is. Ugh. All right. Pretty much all there. Got a lot more stuff down here, but there's like a gear piece. I'm gonna just try to look around here, see if this thing's got a manufacturer or something. Ugh. No, I don't see anything. Yeah, pretty cool shot of the top of this. I just wish there wasn't as much brush, but there it is. Ooh. And then right here oh, we got this steam boiler here's the bottom side of it still got the doors they still open it so look at the bottom of that boiler heavy doors here's a look at all this all these holes in the boiler Here's this big old smoke stack or smelter stack, whatever you want to call it. Which is about 30 feet tall. Taller than the stamp mill. Man, there's a look at that little air tank right there. Yeah, it just sucks how, uh, how much brush there is up in here. But it definitely looks like there's... Ooh. 
Oh, these are thorn bushes. These things hurt. There's a definitely a structure back here, but might have to turn off the camera and grab the machete to get there. All right, so just crossing the stream here, and I noticed that this is part of the uh, 1800s wooden pipeline. So around the wood, they put a bunch of uh, metal bands to prevent it from opening up. Yeah, that just keeps continuing upstream. It's all full of moss up there, but yeah, pretty cool. Uh, we got a pipe. In the 1800s made out of wood. Don't seem like that nowadays. Alright All right, guys, gonna get some water from this stream right here. The Bear Grylls way. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Is that good? Bro, I'm using a nicer way. That tastes pretty good. All right guys, the sun went down pretty quickly, but this is probably the last thing I'll show in this ghost town. And hopefully I get out here probably next year. But right here, we got what I call an outhouse with quite a view. Pretty sketchy because uh, it's only got that one plank right there. And as you can see, it's a one seater. Oh man, what a view. You can actually see the cables that go to like the main the main uh, tram station. It actually has an ore bucket over there, but fortunately I didn't get to go over there. But, pretty awesome. Now we'll head on to the next cabin. All right, walking along the trail on our way to the next cabin, and we find the remains of this stone cabin. Pretty square in nature, but uh, yeah, pretty cool. And then across the canyon, I don't know if you guys can see that, right over there, there's actually a very tall wall. It's about probably 10, 15 feet. It's actually got a window in there. But yeah, we'll uh, keep continuing on this way. Alright, just did another little stream crossing and came across another section of this 1800s pipeline. Pretty much just continues upwards. I was looking back where we just crossed. Pretty cool. Let's keep on going. All right, got yet another cool find, not even like 20 feet from the pipe. And we got this, looks like 19 teens era riveted wheelbarrow. Still got the metal wheel, got those spokes and all that. Oh yeah, that's a cool one. And we'll just uh, keep on going up this way. All right, looking down into the canyon, we got yet another stone structure, and this is one of the more intact ones. All four walls are still there. And you can actually see some of the old timbers that used to be part of the roof, but they have long since collapsed in. Would love to go there, but as you can see, 
sun's pretty much gone. Looks like there's a waterfall right there. That's pretty cool. But yeah, super cool 1800 stone cabin right there. Definitely for the next trip. And that is where we're heading up. Yeah, this place is definitely living up to its name, Ghost Town, because there are just so many uh, of these structures out here. You can definitely tell at one point that there were a decent amount of people living here, especially in the late 1800s. I believe uh, the period between 1881 and 1882, the main ghost town actually had a post office. So that just tells you that even though as remote as it is right now, this place used to be booming, literally. But yeah, just look at that chimney. Got a really big master stone or whatever you guys like to call those, but yeah, that's awesome. Of course, got this wall. And there should still be more stuff as we hike along, so let's keep our eyes peeled. Yep, just as I suspected, yet another stone structure, not even like 15 yards away from the other one. But just look at how they constructed the walls along that huge boulder. There's actually two huge boulders, but they just shoved those rocks up in there. Very nice and snugly. Looks like this one actually burned. That timber's got some char on it. As does this one. Yeah, pretty awesome. This wall is about, let's say, seven or eight feet tall. And then back there, that probably would have been the fireplace. Awesome stuff. Oh, a little bit out of breath. There's a little section where I had to crawl through. But we got yet another stone structure along the way. Oh wow. Pretty much all the walls are there. Right there in that back corner, that's where the fireplace used to be. I actually got some wooden shelves right here, two of them. Probably where they would have put their canned goods, stuff like that. Pretty awesome. All right, guys, made it to another really cool structure. Those uh, window shutters or whatever those boards are look pretty cool. But we got quite a few cool artifacts here, including this single jack. Looks like they didn't even uh, bend this horseshoe into the shape yet. Pretty cool. This little chisel, got some shears that still move, really big, this almost looks like a stamp, there's some other stuff over this way, whatever that piece is, some pipe, From up here. We got this big piece. That almost looks like it's off of a stat mill or something. Dude, this might have been a mill site, like right here. 
There's just a bunch of big metal. Huh. Cool stuff here. Uh, it doesn't look like there's much more. Hmm? Yeah. What the dam? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, pretty interesting sight. We're getting pretty close to the cabin at this point. Probably another maybe 30 minutes, maybe an hour. We'll see. All right, guys, it's morning. It's uh, eight in the morning, and uh, I decided to hold off on recording the cabin in all its glory until uh, daytime. So here it is. I got some pretty cool star trails going over it last night, so you'll be seeing that. But yeah, here's the cabin. Uh, I slept on this bench. Johnny slept on that old bed frame. I had a nice fire last night. And uh, let's show some of the artifacts and uh, we'll head inside. It's pretty nasty in there, but right here we actually got a Buffalo Forge company. Uh, I believe this is a blower. So the way this would have worked is this hand crank would have used to turn around and this is what would have blown air into the mine. So this is like a ventilation system of sorts for the mine and then uh right here we got a pretty cool blue enamelware chamber pot looks like surprise how i mean it's pretty rotted on that side but it's not too rotted being out here and then uh got this chain it's pretty interesting looks like some barrel bands right there in the corner and just lots of miscellaneous stuff right here up against the cabin. Uh, let's see. Not sure what a lot of this stuff is. Like this piece. Don't know what that is. Got this pretty cool piece off the bottle. It says Rochester, New York. It actually looks like it's got an iron pontal on the bottom. So that thing definitely dates to right around the... I would even say 1870s. So this is definitely from the ghost town era. Uh, we got some pretty big pretty big pieces of iron right here. Got this little baby flywheel maybe off of like a compressor or something. Got a shovel, a couple shovels Shovel with the handle, couple gears, another blue enamelware piece. You can definitely tell that whatever this piece is, that thing is hand forged by a blacksmith. Look how crude the end is. And then it looks like this is a breaker bar. This is what would have braked broke the rocks off of like the back of the mine and here's the entrance to the mine or not the mine the cabin <laughs> so i got a few horse and mule shoes right here on the sides and uh, let's head in here actually yeah i guess we'll head in here i have my headlamp on me but it's pretty nasty in here so I don't really feel like I'm going to be checking it out too much. But there's a couple bed frames here. There's this one and this newer looking bunk bed. And this other newer bunk bed. I think the log is in that uh, cooler. you got a couple more artifacts. Looks like an old amber whiskey bottle over there in the corner. 
and then this window doesn't even have any panes in it anymore so that's probably part of the reason why this cabin is so nasty because like there's like a bunch of mold and pack rats and mice roaming around in here oh thank you <laughs> Johnny handed me his light so uh oh yeah there's actually some more stuff uh so there's this looks like old coffee or teapot right there some more modern ones here's the smokestack in the fireplace and then this is kind of like a storage room for all the all the tools all the supplies we need out here looks like there's some uh, water gallons over there I don't know if any of those are full we didn't check since there's literally a really nice flowing spring outside. Yeah, just some, looks like a Coleman lantern. Some other miscellaneous stuff. That's a pretty cool looking vice. That's definitely old. Got some propane, pots, pans. That's pretty much it, honestly. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely glad we didn't we didn't stay in here because it is pretty nasty. Definitely not one of the nicest cabins I've seen. But from the outside, it looks amazing. And of course, we got some names of people that have been here. Wow, Bill, 1978, based out of Toronto. I believe I've actually found his name in another mine over in Death Valley. So that's pretty cool. Lots of names from like the 70s and 80s right around here. And let's go check out, we'll check out the side of that cabin really quick. But right here, we got this, uh, Nice groundwater spring that is piped from right back there. And then we got all these really old pots that have probably been sitting here for decades. Just rotting away. There's another one right there. But yeah, this is the way we hiked in last night. It was pretty dark, but uh. Yeah, really awesome to get some nice fresh water. And then right here on the side, this looks like a... Yeah, here's some of the old glass panes. Super dirty, obviously. But this looks like a little... Maybe it would have been like a little outbuilding. A little, little tool shed area back in the day probably but it's not in use anymore you can see some old PV or some newer PVC piping coming from the spring right there yeah that's pretty much the cabin uh, I might go and check out uh, one of the prospects which should be across the way I think over that way but, uh, yeah. Also, probably gonna have some breakfast too. Alright, guys, so I'm across the way from the cabin right now. There it is. And the pile that I'm headed to, you can barely see. The bottom side of it but there's a pretty nice orange pile right there in the distance so I'll be headed up there right now hopefully there's a hole to explore all right so we're right below the pile right now and right here I found a really awesome chunk that has so many terminated crystals here's one of the biggest 
But man, look at some of these, I bet. I figured to clean this thing out. You get a decent chunk of change. Look at that one. And this is how big it is. But that is just a massive cluster of crystals. I really wish I could take this thing home, but I literally wouldn't even be able to make it up like that hill right there with this on my back. So yeah, gonna leave that there, but man, that is just beautiful. Look at some of those terminated points. All right, now let's head up to hopefully what is an open mine. All right, on my way, headed up the pile and uh, really hoping that there's something cool up there. As you can see, this is a highly mineralized section of ore that they were taking out because it is just like so red and orange on this pile. And I've been finding pieces of pyrite and lots of those crystals and I think even pieces of like copper or at least what looks like it but let's hope for something good up here oh wow that's a lot of rock fall hopefully it's not collapsed might be oh might be to the left oh yeah that certainly looks look at that hell yeah baby we got a pick what an amazing find and then whatever this piece is it sure is interesting both of those are well, it's definitely late 1800s and hand forged. That is one hell of a find. All right. So yeah, there's definitely an open portal there. Got this stacked cairn and there's even a stacked rock wall on this side. But whatever used to be here, I can't really tell now. Because it's overgrown and lots of big rocks in the way. But hopefully there's more cool stuff to find like that pick. And who knows what else there might be in here. Oh yeah, I think that thing goes in a ways. Oh, I'm so excited. I don't know when the last time a human stepped foot in here. head in here. I don't even think it goes in that far, but yeah, it looks like it only goes in maybe 20 feet. Wow. Well, that's kind of a bummer, but yeah, I got a pretty good view of this quartz vein that they're following. Oh no, it might actually turn right. Oh yeah. Okay, and then it definitely ends. I should have actually yelled in before I came in here because who knows if a mountain lion dens in this thing. Oh, yeah, but that's the end of it. Looks like there's a little bat up there. But we don't bother him. Yep, yeah, that's the face of the mine. Pretty awesome. That uh, pick. It's definitely the best find. That was so awesome to see. Plus right here, it looks like there's a bunch of pyrite. Look at all that. And you just flace off. I'm pretty sure that's all pyrite. Look how shiny it is. I bet there's still gold to be found in here. Lots of 
lots of very interesting. Yeah, some more pyrite up in here. Got some cubes. But yeah, that's the end of this one. Just glad that I got to get into it. All right guys, so we're all packed up, ready to go. Got our decently heavy packs on, and it's time to say farewell to this beautiful cabin and beautiful area. Uh, I got a pretty decent hike ahead, but yeah, we'll get to the car soon. But what an amazing adventure. Thanks to Johnny for tagging along. And uh, yeah, pretty much that's the end of it. Um, on this video, I think the highlight was definitely probably this cabin and the stamp mill down at the town site, at least for me. But uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed these two videos in the series. Uh, please like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.